Hi everyone, Nada here and in today's video I'm going to talk about Intel's new i5-12400 uh, which is a sub $200 processor that just launched and basically brought older Lake cores to an even lower price point which means uh, Intel is basically promising near top tier gaming performance for a low price of $185 without taxes in the US or about the same in euros but then with taxes here in the Netherlands so uh, let's check out this new processor let's see how it performs how it compares to Ryzen 5 5600X as well as i5 12600K and let's see if it's worth spending any money on it at all let's begin this video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Now, while Intel is doing really well on the technology side, uh, their product naming is still a bit of a mess in my opinion and in some way I would even call it a bit of misleading. So if we look at the i5-12600K, uh, it's a processor with a total of 10 cores of which 6 are fast performance cores and 4 are efficiency cores which makes it a great CPU for gaming and a surprisingly good CPU for productivity as well. So usually uh, you wanted to get an i7 or an i9 for productivity but the 12600K can easily handle some serious editing if you wanted to do that. So traditionally uh, you would expect this CPU to have slightly lower clock speeds than the 12600K and as a non-K CPU you won't be able to overclock it. Uh, but that is totally not the case here. So the lower tier i5s actually have a completely different core layout. Uh, this processor doesn't have the four extra efficiency cores and it is basically a straightforward six core 12 thread CPU. Now I'm going to talk a bit later about how much that matters if all you do is game, but if you are considering this CPU for multi-core workloads, the performance difference between this one and the 12600K is actually very large. In Cinebench for example, you're looking at a more than 40% performance difference, which is a huge gap for two CPUs that share the same name. Anyway, even without the e-cores, the 12400 still beats the $300 Ryzen 5 5600X in that Cinebench test, but which CPU ends up on top does depend a little bit on the application you run. So the 5600X uh, just beats the 12400 in the Blender render, for example, but overall, I would say they perform pretty close to each other in most multi-threaded benchmarks. And that puts the 12400 in a very good position because it is much cheaper and it uses less power as well. For gaming though, single core performance is still the most important thing and this graph looks more in line with what you would expect. The i5-12400 boosts up to 4.4 GHz compared to the 4.9 on the 12600K and 5.2 on the 12900K, so it scores a little bit lower than the fastest Alder Lake CPUs. But again, it is still ahead of any of the latest Ryzen CPUs, uh, including about 10% ahead compared to the 50 5600X. Now let's see how all this translates into games, uh, starting with a couple of AAA titles on 1080p and 1440p and using an RTX 3090 GPU. Now I'm going to put the full system uh, in the description down below so you can check that out if you're interested in the details. Far Cry 6 is a game that really relies on the CPU to get high frame rates and here the higher clock speeds of the other Intel chips play a huge part. But 130 FPS is still very respectable I would say and it is enough to beat the 5600 X. On 1440p the results look similar, pointing at a CPU bottleneck for all CPUs except for the 12900K. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a game that seemed to suit AMD a bit better than Intel, uh, with the 5600X beating the 12600K on 1080p, so the 5600X stays ahead of the 12400 here as well. But again, 192 FPS is still a very good result and it's only a single frame behind the 12600K. On 1440p, it manages to just get ahead of the 5600X, but all CPUs are really close with 
only the much more expensive 12900K being ahead. Cyberpunk 2077 usually does better with Intel CPUs and the same applies to the 12400. The result is very similar to the 12600K and the single frame advantage is more likely margin of error than an actual benefit, although there might be a tiny possibility that the lack of e-cores actually helps somehow in this game. On 1440p, we're looking at a GPU bottleneck and it makes absolutely no difference anymore which CPU you use. Now moving on to some competitive games. In Modern Warfare, uh, now with updated data from the new Caldera map, the average frame rate is just behind the 5600X, but the 1% low result is a bit higher, and I do personally think that those are more important in a competitive shooter, especially in a game that is still pretty hard to run at high frame rates consistently. On 1440p, the results pull a bit closer together, and it probably doesn't matter which CPU you use here, uh, with only the 12900K really making a difference yet again. In Overwatch, it also doesn't really seem to matter which of these CPUs you buy. Uh, the 1% low is slightly behind the 12600K and the 5600X, but it doesn't make a real difference even with the fastest, most expensive gaming monitors you can buy today. And that goes for both 1080p and 1440p resolution. Rainbow Six Siege is a bit more interesting, at least. Uh, again, all CPUs are putting out enough FPS that you probably won't notice the difference when gaming, but at least we're seeing some measurable differences between these processors. The 12400 is now trailing behind both the 12600K and the 5600X, so I guess if you own a 360Hz monitor, you might want to know that. On 1440p, uh, the gaps close once again, and we see little to no difference. In Apex Legends, the new CPU looks really good. On 1080p, where the CPU matters a bit more, it just beats the 5600X in average and 1% low FPS, and the gap with the 12600K is nearly as big as the price would suggest. Now, in my last video, uh, the 12900K did some odd 1% low results, but I have retested it and it does look better now. Still, if this is your game, uh, spending a lot more on your CPU doesn't seem to bring many benefits, uh, whether you're playing on 1080p or 1440p. Now, Valorant is again more of a theoretical test than a practical one, as none of these CPUs should drop you under 360 FPS on any resolution, uh, even with all settings on high. Now, AMD does have a clear win here, and the 12400 does lose a bit, again, compared to the 12600K, but with these frame rates, it should be clear that this game shouldn't really affect your CPU choice at all in any way. And finally, CSGO, which is a game with extremely high average FPS values, but surprisingly strong 1% low dips. It is sensitive to your CPU choice, and with the 12400 now a bit further behind the 5600X and the 12600K that we've seen in most other games. Now, they're not huge differences, and most players won't really notice them, but if you're really into CSGO and you play on super fast, low resolution monitors with high end GPUs, this might be enough of a difference to go for something like the 12600K. Uh, once you jump to 1440p though, or above, uh, the gaps close again, and you're most likely looking at a GPU bottleneck. Now, overall, I would say the 12400 comes out pretty strong in games, especially when you consider the price of this CPU. Uh, it mostly keeps up with the $300 alternatives while costing much less. But the cost of the CPU is only a part of the equation, and that kind of brings me to my next topic the motherboards. Now, until now, the cheapest socket 1700 motherboard, which is what you need for these uh, 12 gen CPUs, costs around $200 or euros. And this is where the new H610, B660 and H670 boards come in. Now, B660 is likely going to be the most focused one from Intel's board partners. And these are expected to start at around $100 with the more interesting models probably coming in around 150-ish dollars or so. Now keep in mind, a decent B550 motherboard for your Ryzen 5 costs around 130 to $150 at the moment. That being said, I haven't really seen that many boards 
just yet. The only board I have is this uh, B660M Mortar Wi-Fi from MSI. And performance-wise, uh, if you're going for the 12400, there is actually absolutely no reason to go for the Z690 board. Uh, you can expect similar performance, as nowadays you can actually uh, overclock your memory even with these lower tiered boards. And neither board can overclock these non-K CPUs, so there is, again, absolutely no reason to spend more on a Z690 board but you should look at features because there are actually a couple of features differences between the two. The main one is that due to a lower number of DMI lanes, you will only get PCIe Gen 5 support for the first slot, so you shouldn't count on uh, using Gen 5 SSDs next to your graphics card, but if you're buying a CPU on a budget, you shouldn't really care about that that much. And uh, actually this micro ATX board, for example, still has two Gen 4 M2 slots, so uh, that is more than enough for most people. Uh, beyond that, you can basically expect these cheaper boards to have fewer M2 slots in general, uh, fewer USB ports and weaker VRMs. But VRMs do matter for high-end CPUs, but since the 12400 here uses so little power, that's also not a real concern, in my opinion. And this ultimately means that as long as you get the connections you need, any V660 board that has even the smallest of heat sinks on the VRMs should probably be completely fine. Now, one thing you should look out for is the memory support. Uh, just like the Z690 boards, these B660 boards will offer support for either DDR4 or DDR5. And for any budget-ish build, DDR4 is absolutely the way to go right now. Uh, DDR5 pricing and availability does vary strongly per region, but here in the Netherlands, the cheapest DDR5 that's available is actually 450 euros for 32 gigabytes. So that's about $500, including taxes, compared to $120 to $150 for a similar DDR4 kit. So until this situation improves, it makes the most sense that anyone looking for a 12400 should go for a cheaper DDR4 motherboard and some DDR4 memory. Now many really solid looking B660 boards uh, will come in a DDR4 variant as well, including this B660M Mortar from MSI. Now, this CPU does include a box cooler, but since I got this CPU from MSI, uh, I actually didn't have the cooler to test with. Uh, looking at some other videos online, it does look like Intel's new cooler design is completely sufficient for this CPU, and the only reason to upgrade it would be to maybe keep your system quieter. In that case, any $30 to $40 CPU tower cooler would be just fine with this low power i5. So yeah, uh, this 12400 is an excellent budget CPU for anyone looking to buy a new system. Uh, the closest competitor in terms of performance would be the Ryzen 5 5600X, which offers a pretty similar gaming and all-around experience, but costs $100 more. And even if you end up spending some of the price difference on your motherboard, you will end up on a new platform with a better feature set. Now, if you already have a Ryzen 5000 series system, there is absolutely no need to go for this, but if your current PC is a couple of years old and you absolutely want and need a new one, uh, a new Intel rig does make a bit more sense here. Now, between the 12400 and the 12600K, I would say it's a bit more of a difficult choice. Now, considering that PCs have become more expensive in general, you should really look at the cost of the total system before deciding. So if you're going to spend something like $2,000 on your new PC, spending $100 more or 5% more uh, to get the 12600K is probably the smart move. Uh, the higher clocks and the four extra efficiency cores will give you some advantages uh, both in games and in other tasks. And I also expect it to hold up better over time. So even if you don't buy a more expensive Z690 motherboard and you don't want to overclock it, it makes more sense. But if you're limited by your budget or you're not considering to upgrade your entire PC, the i5-12400 gets you most of the performance of the fancy i5 at a much more reasonable price and with all the benefits of having a much more power efficient CPU. I hope all this makes sense. Anyway, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video and thank you for sticking to the end. If you liked it, uh, don't forget to click that subscribe button for more content like this one. Bye guys and see you in the next one.